Welcome to the Elevate Everyday podcast. I'm joined today by my powerlifting coach. His name's Andres Allen. And uh, this guy, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, Andres, but um, the reason why I picked you to be my coach and why I reached out, um, I felt like you are stronger than what you even appear <laughs> to be. So <laughs> I hope you don't take that as a backhand compliment, but I was like, man, this, <laughs> this, dude, <laughs> this dude is stronger, than, like way stronger than me. Um, and, but yeah, I was just, I was impressed by your numbers, impressed by seeing your, your clients numbers and, and really just, you know, the, the content you put out there, I felt like was super genuine. I felt like I was getting to know you through social media, which I feel like is, that's, that's good. Um, you know, marketing and stuff like that. So, so I was impressed um, and I reached out to you and we've been working for a couple of months now. Um, I'm liking the results I'm seeing so far. Um, so yeah, man, I'm excited to have you on the podcast. I appreciate you for coming on. Um, and it, it's going to be a really bro first question, but like, but what, what are your stats? Like, what are your, what's your squat bench and deadlift? We'll start with that. <laughs> all right. Stats. First, we'll start with high stats. All right. So I'm five, <laughs> six on a good day. And, okay. um, and, uh, I'm, usually competing around the 82 uh, well my my true weight class and i i think i competed higher one time on the pizza day diet that might be a story for the later later podcast but um i i competed in the 82.5 kilo weight class class so around 182 pounds um so what are my best lifts i just had a streak of three nine for nine meets which is feels pretty damn good Nice. Um, and my best lift, uh, I just won regionals, uh, Southern regionals. So I won regionals in first place with a 496 pound squat. So putting the four reds and the colors on there felt pretty damn good. looks pretty damn cool on the bar too. <laughs> uh, bench 363 and I deadlifted 584 for, I believe like a 1463 total. So nice. what would that be? 496 plus 363 plus... 584 yeah 1443 total um and around like a 443 dot something like that so pretty you know pretty decent regionally we'll say regionally nice. we'll say i'm regionally competitive <laughs> <laughs> nice man yeah it's, it's impressive I've, i'm impressed by your bench that's that's the most i'm impressed by and, and what i'm seeing working with you so far it's like um i've noticed that you're big on frequency of bench you know hitting yes. three, three times a week i'm already Practice. seeing benefit from that yeah and it, it's it's like you know I, I try to tell my clients as well it's like you know lifting these movements, it's like a skill in itself, right? So you can get yes. that, that neural adaptation. So doing it more, like you can, you can just see improvement just from, like you said, more practice of doing it. So, um, it's badass, but yeah. Yeah. So it's, a, it's like a double-edged sword with bench. Cause it's like, you know, doing, doing it a lot, you get really sharp, but like it just detrains so fast too. Like I'll miss a bench session or two and I'll like, be like, wow, I've like forgot how to bench. Yeah. You know, you lose so many of these little technical, uh, attributes that you have to relearn. So, yeah. Um, and I'm only having you do three times so I can get you into four. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're going to be benching like almost every other day. That's it. That's yeah. it. Nice. Well, cool. So one question I want to ask you, cause I've seen a post about, um, you being like an, a disruptive kid, um, kind of, kind of being like, you know, maybe a bit more rebellious as a kid and stuff like that. So, um, and I think, I think I've kind of saw something about where disruptive strength, the name, like your Instagram handle comes from, but what, what's the meaning behind disruptive strength? Yeah. So I love, I love the double meaning of disruptive because it can mean, you know, rebellious. It can mean, uh, you know, tr tr you know, troublemaking, rabble rousing, you could say. Um, but it also has a flip side of being innovative, of being intelligent, of being, uh, you know, brilliant things like that. So it's like, that's what I love most about my personality is like, I never felt like I fit in. I always felt like, um, you know, I was doing things differently. I was doing things, uh, you know, yeah, just doing things differently. Um, but also in an in innovative way, in a way that has proved my success. Right. Um, you know, I've been very unconventionally successful in my career. Right. Um, because if you're a troublemaker and you're a shithead and then you never make anything of yourself, you're just a troublemaker and a shithead, right? But like, <laughs> you got to kind of prove something. And I felt like I had something to prove. So I became successful in uh, fitness and fitness has changed my life. So um, yeah. that's kind of what, you know, my brand is really an extension of myself in a lot of ways, especially as a solo, you know, fitness coach, as, as you, as you know, right. And we've also yeah. talked about hiring assistants as well, but you know, currently, we're, you know, currently we're solo, right. So, um, you know, I really think that my brand 
kind of embodies and needs to embody kind of my my personality and things like that. So, yeah. and I think that brings people to me. Like you said, like I don't right. really love people working with me for just like, oh, like you provide the exact type of service like for the exact price point that like works in my budget. It's like right. Why the fuck would I want, you know, why would I want that? You know what I mean? I'm not Walmart. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want people making purchasing decisions like that. I want people to work with me because they like my personality. You know, they like my strength. They like my programming style. Um, They like the other people in my program. Like, I'm, right. one of my favorite things about my business right now is the type of people that I work with. Like, you just invited me on your podcast. I was just playing video games with one of my other, you know, with one of my other former clients. So I've trained on and off for like seven fucking years, right? right. I had dinner with some of my clients in Boston, like... You know what I mean? Like, and some of those people I've been trained for five years. So it's like these people that I really care about and I can really see them go through journeys of career changes and, you know, developing their businesses, becoming personal trainers. Like I can't even fucking count, um, at least on my fingers, the amount of clients that have been inspired by me and become personal trainers or online fitness coaches or have paid yeah. me for business coaching, things like that, or have paid me for business coaching and then become a powerlifting client, you know? So it's like I get to see these people you know, thrive and change the journeys. And like, you know, I hate to be a dick, but like, I think this is just about so much more than fitness. And I think if you're a yeah. fitness coach, that's just like, oh, I'm all about fitness. It's just like, man, it just gets boring after a while. Like, I don't want really want to go that deep into the weeds of like right. the details of like fitness coaching and physiology. And, you know, listen, more power to you if you do. You know, I think that's necessary. And those people have created the foundation for what we do, right? Those people that have gone into the weeds and found out the real facts of the real science about everything, they enable and and then make it digestible for people like us to to go ahead and apply in the real world. Yeah. You know, that's amazing. But that's just not me. What what I think most profoundly about fitness is what it can do for you in your life. Right. For sure. And I think I think there's a bigger mission because I mean, look at you. Look what you do now. Um, you know, and how much success you've had. I've seen through your posts and your growth, like fitness has been so much more than just a good body for you. It really yeah. has. No, for sure. I, I resonate with that so much, man. And I, I think that's what I, I, I strive to create too with, with my clients. I hope, and I've, I've gotten some good testimonials recently where it's like, you know, more about just working out and eating right, right? Like you're creating um, kind of just a lifestyle, like showing people how you can live a certain lifestyle and showing how this stuff can branch out into other areas and, and affect your career positively and affect your relationships positively like yes like, yeah so i completely resonate with that and i think any coach that's just <laughs> and, and like you said you know some people are just like those science brains and they're going to do the research and kind of figure out you know that how we how we can coach our clients and stuff like that but i want i want to like have a holistic approach with clients and like help them level up in lots of different areas so absolutely i, I, I resonate with that so um but yeah how did like platform domination um, you know, that kind of being, I think that's, that's what your, that's what your coaching brand is, is called, right? Platform. Yeah. Domination. Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of going through this evolution because like I, you just talked about disruptive strength and, yeah. and like, I'm still passionate about that and I haven't changed my Instagram handle. So it's like, like I, I almost intended platform domination to be like a rebrand, but it's like, okay. but I still don't want to let go of disruptive strength because it's, it's a catchy name. First of all, and embodies my personality. And people like it. People say disruptive strength. People fucking call me out in public, you know. But <laughs> but disruptive strength is a little bit more general, right? And you've mm -hmm. seen the type of people that I work with now. And of course, I started in commercial gym. I trained everyone, right. old, young, gay, straight, short, tall, um, any any demographic or goal you could think of. I fucking trained them. Seriously, I'd, I'd love for people to challenge me and, and give me a demographic that I haven't trained. Seriously, <laughs> you know. Me training too. fucking 70 hours a week in a commercial gym. Yep. Um, and I loved it. And I think it's made me really fucking good. I think that's one of my biggest competitive advantages. It's like, dude, there's not a scenario that I haven't fucking seen yet. Right. You know? Yeah. So, um, so platform domination was kind of like you trying to niche down being more. Exactly. Exactly. I wanted like people this. to look at that in my niche in powerlifting and say, okay, he's the powerlifting guy. Right. right. And, and you know, I saw people starting to copy, like I had it, my tagline, like I'll help you dominate the platform. And I saw people starting to like in my, you know, extended circles start to like copy that. And I was like, I got to lock this shit down. I, I need people to know that platform domination is me. Yeah. And I, and I thought it was catchy and someone's going to fucking steal it sooner or later. So I was like, <laughs> listen, you motherfuckers got to know platform domination is me. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, I made it my official team name. So what go. is it? Mirror it's mirrored up there, but uh, rest assured it's platform domination. <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, 
So yeah, that that was that was more so like an evolution of like my brand and my team. So maybe I'm disruptive strength and my team is platform domination, if that makes sense. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so yeah, but how you know you've been in the the online fitness space longer than I have. You know what we were kind of talking about how I've been a trainer in general, I think longer than you, but you've been in the online space longer. So um, how did you just kind of like find yourself get more into online and like what's what's what was kind of the evolution of going from in-person to online and how did this like all come about for you? That's a really good story. Um, so I never even knew that you could make online coaching a career. I really, I really wish I had known earlier. All I knew was like, again, I have, you know, a rich commercial gym, like personal training, like boots on the ground, yeah. uh, background. Right. Um, but I had a, yeah, I was, I was a programming nerd and I never had many clients starting out just cause I didn't know how to fucking sell. I didn't know how to market. Um, and I didn't have any of those skills, right? And I was still relatively inexperienced. But what I did know is I loved learning about programming. I was always a programming nerd. Yeah. And when I didn't have clients, I would walk around the gym. I would do sets of like as many pull-ups as I could, leaving some in the tank. And I ended up being able to do like 30 at once. So that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in between that, talking to people doing pull-ups, I would sit at the trainer bar and I would, and I would research programming on the computer. Nice. Um, so through learning about programming so the trainer started to pay attention and one of my trainer friends who ended up helping me mentor to learn how to sell and market which saved my job by the way i was definitely on the chopping block to get fired because i didn't have any fucking clients <laughs> so i learned how to like do an assessment and market and sell and get clients right which launched the rest of my career but he asked me he had like 17 different parameters for this program he wanted to do he wanted to do it for like for crossfit but also only unilateral stuff, but wanted extreme high volume, wanted to really focus on hypertrophy and wanted to train six days a week and all these, all these parameters. So I was like, okay, this is exciting. Like, this is exactly the problem. Like, and, and you know, at a commercial gym, how many athletes do you get to train? Yeah. Right. This guy's genetically gifted, ambitious athlete. So fuck yeah, dude, <laughs> you know, I, I took him up on it and I remember staying up like all night trying to write this fucking program and make it good. And he was so impressed and he kicked ass and his performance is awesome. I remember him doing like five sets of 10 Bulgarian split squats of the hundreds, like going after it, man, just going the fuck after it. Yeah. And, uh, he was like, how much? I was like, uh, he was like 50 bucks. And I was like, okay, 50 bucks. So I made my first <laughs> online coaching sale, you know, Excel spreadsheet. Um, and as, as a commercial gym trainer, um, you know, I started training more, more of the trainers there. Um, and some people that came to me for powerlifting, you know, wouldn't want to pay for uh, fitness coaching anymore. It was like 300, 400 bucks. Right. Um, so I would downsell them to online coaching and I would, I looked at the trainer next to me that was a bodybuilder and doing a little bit of online, online coaching. Right. And he charged a hundred. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll charge a hundred. And you know, if you ever want to talk more about business later, um, especially in powerlifting, um, that's how a lot of powerlifting coaches learn how to, um, charge for their services. They look at the idiot next to them and say, how much are you charging? Right. And it's a big, <laughs> it's a big fucking problem because that's not how you run a business, right? right? You have to, you have to look at your costs. You have to look at your profit. You have to look at your goals. You have to look at your marketing, but th these sorts of things, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, your lifestyle that you need to pay for. Um, there's a lot more that goes into it rather than how much the idiot charging next to you, because the idiot next to you might be living at home, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. look at you you pay for an apartment right that shit ain't free right. so how are you gonna how are you gonna run your business and charge your shit the same as someone uh living at home right yeah kind of just like you're you're talking about like basically commoditizing yourself like just competing exactly. competing to the bottom <laughs> with other but people. whatever it, it wasn't yeah. my and also yeah. it was my side hustle at the time right yeah. versus this is our full-time job this is how we fucking eat this is how we pay rent right yeah. you know this is how we save and hopefully maybe one day we'll retire right if you gotta yeah. pay for that people fucking don't don't realize that because you know, when you work for an employer, a lot of that shit is automatic. You get shit in your 401k, right? Yeah. Do we get shit automatically put into our 401k? At least not for me. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. It's 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 different for us, right? But anyway, charged 100 bucks, um, got a few online clients, um, and it was a blast. You know, yeah. got to use my information about programming that I was learning and try new things and get creative and uh, one of those clients I just I just was playing a game with, right? One of the first original ten. Um, and I just ended up getting 10 consistent, uh, programming clients. I couldn't even call it coaching, right. You know, I would, I would, I would, 
you know, the ones that would send me videos on IG, I would review and help them with their form. So I guess there was some coaching going on, but it was mostly programming, let's be honest, compared to what we do now. It's so much more comprehensive. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I had my 10 programming clients at 100 bucks a month, so an extra 1000 bucks a month side hustle in 2017 or 16 or whatever the fuck. Not so bad, right? Now, 1000 bucks a month, I mean, fuck, man. I can barely pay, pay for my health insurance and car insurance, but, <laughs> um, you know, not so bad. And then it grew to 15 and then I was like dropping the ball a little bit um, because I had these 15 online coaching clients and then 50 in-person clients and not so much organization to figure it out. Um, so it dropped back down to 10. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the beginning of how I got into online coaching. So. Yeah, that's that's pretty similar to me, like doing it in person and then starting it kind of as a side hustle. Um, and yeah, charging like 100 bucks, I think, in the beginning for me as well. Yep, there you um, go. That's the magic number, right? <laughs> Yeah. But it was so fun because, like, I had my commercial gym clients, and then I had my specialty clients that were all powerlifters, yeah. um, and I got to I got to exercise that. So it, yeah. it was it was really cool, and I got some pretty damn good results. And I traveled to their first meet, nice. you know, got some experience pa coaching powerlifting meets. So it was really the beginning of my you know powerlifting coaching career. Yeah, I remember um, too because I resonate with what you said on um, kind of researching programming in between training clients and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember, uh, did you ever get into mass monthly applications of, of strength sport no never no okay i because I, that was one that i was in between clients stuff like that just nerding out on awesome. <laughs> on that stuff so like you know greg knuckles eric helms yes. omar yep. esoff so that's like their um their newsletter basically and they put out like research stuff like that so um i'm, I'm just randomly plugging them in this but but yeah that, that was something that um yeah. that i really liked so but that's that, cool. that makes the difference between uh, you and the other trainers. You know, you see we've made a career independently, and I'm sure we've seen some of our peers fail to do so or right. sputter along, these things like that. And I saw the difference between people like us who, you know, and they also change careers, right? They'd be, yeah. you know, become a police officer or, you know, a FedEx driver or something like that. No shade to those careers, but it's like they didn't do it for the love of the game right? or because that was always their plan. Um, yeah. They did it because they failed out as a trainer. Yeah. You understand? And I think yeah. that's a distinction. And that's because they weren't studying in between clients. That's the biggest <laughs> fucking difference. Those yeah. that were always studying in between and making that time. Like I remember yeah. I would work a split shift. I would work in the morning, train all my morning clients. And then in between, and I would be so tired. But I would yeah. jack myself up on caffeine, microwave yeah. my chicken and rice, <laughs> and I would read before yeah. I worked out. And then I would get yeah. my session in between. And then train my eating clients and go home and eat and do it all again, right? And yeah. that made the fucking difference, man. That yeah. made the difference. And I was tired. And, so, dude, <laughs> I remember going home and studying with my friend, and I would, like, fall asleep reading. And he'd be like, wake your ass up. <laughs> and we would finish that chapter. And, you know, but, you know, that has made all the difference in my career. It really has. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I, th I think that's part of why – you know, I think real recognizes real, right? And I can see the the passion and what you do and stuff. And so obviously it's just cool to, to have a coach that's as passionate as you are um, about what you're doing and everything. So um, it's awesome. But what, one question I wanted to ask you was like, what's what's one of the most common mistakes? Because I, I, I feel like I'm already learning a lot with, with some of my things, you know, on squat, we were talking about it before the call and everything with my, like my mobility and my hips. But what what's the most common mistake you see people make that are trying to gain strength and they're like struggling to, to put pounds on their total and stuff like that. A hundred percent. Um, I would say, you know, you can say technique, but, um, I'm going to ultimately say their programs are dog shit. Their programs are just shit. Yeah. Um, because a lot of technique things, you know, I can tell you to, you know, get lower on your squat, get lower on your squat, get lower on your squat all day. Yeah. But if your hips are tight and we're not addressing that mobility, we're not using the right variations on squat, or if I'm loading you too heavy, let's say I prescribe you right now 405 for four, right? And yeah. our first set of, you know, our first set of four on this wave was pretty light, right? Yeah. Definitely sub-maximal, right? You weren't exactly yeah. grinding. Let's say I prescribe you too much weight and it's the wrong variation. Okay, cool. I can tell you to get lower all day, but how the fuck are you going to get lower with, you know, a max set of four uh, with the wrong variation, yeah. right? Yeah. So you can see that cues and technique only go so far with shit programming. Right. Right. So I have to allow you to get better through the pacing of the program, through the right variations. Right. You know, I have this client, Lisa, she's a master's lifter and God, she's a challenge to coach, but such a good challenge. She really like needs me to explain every aspect of the program to really believe in it. And, you know, as a lesser coach, I would be annoyed and my ego challenged, but this far in my career, I'm like, okay, I need to articulate this better to a more, 
you know, intelligent neurotic lifter. So they understand to get buy-in, right? Whereas yeah. some people you're, you're, you're a little bit in the middle to where you're not going to believe in me, you know, wholeheartedly. If I tell you to do squats on a BOSU ball, you'll probably question me. <laughs> yeah. Whereas some clients wouldn't, and it's hilarious. And <laughs> I, I thank them for that belief. You know, it helps, but you're also not so skeptical that you're up my ass about every aspect of the program. Right. Right. You know, so you're, you're kind of right in the middle and, and a lot of clients are right. Um, it also helps that some of my stuff is probably logically consistent. So there's nothing in there really crazy that's making you question me, but yeah. <laughs> you know, if I start yeah. giving you 10 by tens, maybe you question me more, but, um, you know, I think that, I think that helps kind of reason through my programming decisions. But anyway, back to the, um, original question, it's just programming, man. If you're benching twice a week, um, you know, man, it's just going to be hard. You know, it's just yeah. going to be hard unless you're a, you know, 308 on a bunch of uh, steroids. It's going to be really fucking tough. You know, right. if you're having trouble hitting depth on squat and you're constantly going too heavy, starting your blocks too heavy, pacing things wrong, um, not using variations to help you. Like if you're having trouble hitting depth, like, you know, you can use tempo squats, you can use pin squats to force them to hit depth. Um, you know, you can use a high bar, you can, um, you know, give them exercises like the front fit elevated split squat that you hate so much. So yeah. they get better at pushing their knees forward, right? Um, these sorts of things, you know, I can cue you all day to push your knees forward. And sometimes I do do that to people, but why don't I give you an exercise that forces you to push your knees forward, like a front fit right. elevated split squat, right? Yeah. Why don't I, you know, if you're having trouble, you know, if you're kind of rushing into the hole, let me force you to go down with a three Mississippi, right? Yeah. You're going to figure it out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe if we're still having issues, then I can give you some mobility work, uh, you know, for your for your hips, especially if someone like you that's sitting all day, right? So yeah. honestly, number one error, people trying to get strong, man. The program is the program is everything. The program is fucking everything, you know. Yeah. And if you're following mm -hmm. shit programming, man, even if you're you know if you're genetically gifted, sure you're gonna make more progress, but not forever, yeah. you know. Yeah. My client yeah. just benched 600 pounds. Um, I have some gifted athletes on my roster. And maybe for the first year, anybody could get them stronger. I tell them that. I'm like, man, you God put you on this earth to be strong. You know, <laughs> who am I to take credit for that? But, but past a certain point, a lesser coach or a lesser program would get you injured, would stall you out, would do too much or do too little, yeah. right? Would fuck up your technique, these things like that. So the yeah. longer you go, the more important the program becomes. Year one. What the fuck ever, man. Especially if you're, especially if you're genetically gifted. But as you go yeah. on, you know, and as you get stronger, you 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 gain the ability to fuck yourself up. You gain the ability to plateau harder. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was kind of you know stuck in this like two to three year plateau of strength. You know, there's a little tiny increment incremental gains past few years, but um, and like like you know, I I was doing other things too. Like I was I've worked on you know more bodybuilding past couple of years as well. And, um, I even did like a stint where I was working on dunking and stuff like that. But, um, but I've noticed like just with good programming, you know, it's not like I was hitting a genetic potential. It's just like, you can really dial things in. Um, and it, if, if you really kind of focus in, have good programming, but I wanted to, to touch on this too, is it's, I don't think it's just good programming. I think it's having a coach that can make those adjustments. Like you were talking about on, yeah. on the fly and like as you're going as well, you know, if you, if you're having trouble getting in the hole, like instead of just having a coach be like, get deeper, right. Like you're going to give, give, uh, like d different variations that are going to help you do that. Um, right. If I think the, the one aspect I've really loved so far is like, I feel like every time I've needed a deload, like it's, I'm just like, man, I'm starting to like, it, it's just like, Oh, but now I'm, I'm getting a deload. Like, it just seems like, <laughs> <laughs> yep, like it's, yep. it's timed really well. Um, so that's, Absolutely. that's been really good. Yeah. And then just, I mean, that, that's an educated guess, right? So, yeah. you know, for a middleweight middle strength guy like you and I, um, you know, a four weeks up one down, you know, works really well, you know, and yeah. for some people that, you know, I just took on this client that we're going to be working more mostly on, uh, you know, hypertrophy building muscle in this first phase. And, you know, we could probably extend that out, um, you know, to five up one down. And then I'm talking to my uh, super heavyweight later. We've been doing a four up one down. I used to have him do three up one down. Um, and now we're going to switch probably to like more like four week waves, right? So where we don't even deload necessarily, but we'll do like a super light intro week. Mm -hmm. And then we'll take a big jump to week two, a big jump to week three, a big jump to week four, and then back down to that intro. So it's yeah. like, you know, you kind of do an educated guess based on the lifter's demographics and then, and then we adjust, you yeah. know? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And you know, you, you're mentioning these, these other lifters you have, and I've noticed you've got like 
pretty pretty badass roster of, of other lifters and you know it's cool to be part of that community and everything but what what is like some of the most common traits that you've noticed um from like your most successful lifters uh you know i could gas myself up all day um one of the things that i've seen as far as raw numbers in my most successful lifters is uh genetic gifts man you can't get around it <laughs> you know i think i have above average genetics for powerlifting so you know, if I really apply myself and, you know, pay for the right coaching and, you know, really stay consistent, things like that, I can have, you know, a significantly above average performance, but I'm never going to bench 600 pounds. Yeah. You know, just, it's not in my DNA, you know? So that's the thing people don't fucking realize, man, your, your genetics lay out your destiny, but it's up to you to fulfill that destiny, right? Yeah. You know, I might have above average powerlifting genetics, but, you know, I graduated high school at 127 pounds if i'd ever lifted a weight then how would i how would i perform above average in powerlifting or if i took up golf or some shit or basketball which would really be hilarious <laughs> you know <laughs> what i'm saying yeah. so number one is just genetics man you can't get around it you know i have some people on my roster that are incredibly dedicated and their progress is slow and i do really good work for them and i adjust everything really tightly and they fucking log everything and they're on point but their progress is just slower right and that's okay you know, and that's okay. They're still going to get way stronger than the average person. They're still going to look awesome. It's still going to improve everything in their life and their relationships, their career, to their finances, to their ambition in life, to their mood, to their enjoyment of life. Um, and they're going to pass those healthy habits on to their kids, right? It's profoundly beneficial. It doesn't mean it's not worth it, right? I'm not, you know, let's say, I, I feel like cooking is a bad example. Um, you know, just because you're not gifted for something doesn't mean it can't be beneficial, I guess. I think right. I'll find an example later. It'll come to me. <laughs> but um, number two is, I would say, I mean, this might be tied in with your genetics too, but the motivation. Like, you have to give a fuck, right? Yeah. One, yeah. Of the, one of the most annoying things, and if he watches this podcast, I'll know who he is, and he's my friend, so, you know deal with it um <laughs> i had this client you know on and off and he's so genetically gifted he's one of those guys that just looks away at a weight and gets stronger and you have to understand there's different responses you know you'll know within the first year man if you really apply yourself how fucking rapid is your progress right yeah. if your progress is double the one the progress of your homies man you got a gift and if your progress is way slower and you're doing all the same shit man you just got shit genetics for strength, and that's okay. You know, there are better responders than others, and some people look so aesthetic. Some people look so much better than me at a given body weight, yeah. but I can fucking outbench them by two. Right. You know, they look so aesthetic. Their fucking biceps are huge, and they come down to these little <laughs> tiny little joints, and just their shape is just beautiful, man. And I look mid as fuck, but I can probably <laughs> out squat and out deadlift them no fucking problem. I can. Yeah. throw around their max for reps right <laughs> these sorts of things but how how motivated you are this guy is just up and down and slacks and just doesn't doesn't work for it so yeah. staying motivated and consistent man um ta I, I i've been saying more and more that powerlifting is a decade sport so if you set mm -hmm. yourself up with you know a good coach that you can work with long term you know if you set up a training schedule that works for you right let's say you have a busy life you have kids you have a career these sorts of things, maybe other hobbies. Um, maybe you should work out six days a week. Maybe four is just fine, right? You pick a training schedule that works for you, right? Coach that works for you. You show up in the fucking gym. You give yourself plenty of time. And you hit um, four days working out on a good program with a coach you like, a team you like, a good gym that you like, and you do that for 10 fucking years. Man, you are going to lift some really impressive shit. Yeah. You're going to lift some really impressive shit, you know? So, I mean, those are those are the biggest factors. I'll, you know, I'll also say um, being able to communicate and being resourceful, right? If you're the type of person that, oh, I tweak my back and I just, like, freak out and the world is ending and, like, oh, I don't know what to do. And then you, just, like, start looking for people to blame. Like, man, like, I got news for you. If you're trying to do this for 10 years and get profoundly strong... Dude, I've tweaked my back like four times plus. Yeah. If I tweaked my back tomorrow, I'd be like, ha ha, went to Snap City again, been here before. 
<laughs> and then I'll talk, you know, I'll either deal with it myself or ask my physical therapist friends and I'll get the fuck on with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so maybe, maybe my greater point is resilience. Sure. Right. Yeah. Over a decade, do you think you might have some career trouble? Do you think you might have some relationship problems? Right. Do you think you might get hit by a car? My client just got hit by a car the other day. You think she's saying, oh, I'm going to quit, you know, lifting and shit like that. No, she's like, can't wait to get back to it. And yeah. I told her I'd testify so she can sue the fuck out of the person that rear-ended her yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you're going to have to have the resilience to make it to that decade. Right? So I would say the top three, you know, are, you know, genetics, you know, motivation and consistency, and resourcefulness and resilience, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, th I think it kind of ties back to what we were talking about you know, just in the beginning of the podcast, you know, saying how this is bigger than just fitness, because I feel like those are traits, right? Like the traits that you're saying have made some of your clients the most successful in powerlifting. Mm -hmm. Like th those are traits that are transferable to other areas of life that are going to make it's you successful. no surprise that they're also yeah. successful in life. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think you know? that's a beautiful thing. Let's and also, see. and also, and also money. Like, yeah, sure. You can be a broke powerlifter, but it's like one, one of my clients, Moody, you know, said the other day, there's like, he said, there's no expense. I won't, I won't spare for my health and performance. Yeah. And, you know, if you're pinching pennies when it comes to your performance, I, we're going to run circles around you. You yeah. know, yeah. you think your competition is not going to body your ass. Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to buy these SBD sleeves that my coach recommended to me. They're too expensive. Like, okay, cool. Your competitor is going to, Oh, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to pay for the best coaching. You know, let me find the discount guy who's been working out for a year that's yeah. charging me a hundred bucks and lifts less than you know this coach right yeah. like okay i mean good for you i mean there's got to be a market for that but like okay you think you're gonna you think you're gonna have the same performance like right i don't know what the fuck you're smoking <laughs> <laughs> you know seriously yeah. yeah on on that note too i just got my so i, I went with the medium spd knee sleeves um and they're, they're like really hard for me to get on <laughs> good <laughs> my legs good that's but, a good sign yeah you're gonna get I, some pop out of it yeah i feel like that's that's like gonna be an advantage because i can like barely even bend my legs <laughs> so i feel yeah. like it's gonna help me squat more perfect um, but yeah that's um, ideal what one question i want to ask you too i asked this to i had my previous coach who was more kind of bodybuilding obviously more of a bodybuilding coach i've had him on the podcast a while back too oh um, cool i'd and, love to yeah, check that out yeah but a, a question i want to ask you that i asked him is like what's the hardest part about coaching me <laughs> ha. dude you make you make my life easy really? um yeah yeah no you're very very coachable um hardest part about coaching you um i mean i'm gonna have to like brush up on my mobility knowledge to help you with your <laughs> squat yeah but like I'd hesitate to say you're hard to coach in any way. I think you're easy to coach. I think you're one of the most coachable people on my roster. Um, I would venture to say that's one of your strongest traits is you're very coachable. Okay. So I, I, I refuse the question. I'm insulted you asked. <laughs> <laughs> you're very coachable. Okay. <laughs> Coaching you is not hard. <laughs> Thank okay. you, comparing you to other people that I've coached. I mean, yeah. you got to be you got to be in the top five coachable people. So. Okay, cool. You are you you are far on the bottom of the list of the people that I have to fucking worry about. You come to me when you have problems. <laughs> you implement shit real fast. Um, you're not annoying. Um, <laughs> you are pretty sharp. You have good training knowledge. Um, you come to me when you have problems. You're solution oriented. You're resourceful. You pay on time. You're cool to talk to. You invite me on your podcast. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck is there to complain about, man? <laughs> I can't even nitpick you. <laughs> the, the feedback I had gotten from from my previous coach was, um, like I would try to, like, put my own like will into the mm -hmm. the programming. So, like, yeah. as a coach, you know what I mean. Like, I'd be like, um, I'd like. See, I you... like that though. There okay. are coaches that hate that. I know. Um, I know in in the powerlifting world. Yeah. Um, Steve Denovi and uh, Sean Norega, Hamstring Poppy and PRS Performance um, just recently parted ways because Steve had like a very strong idea of what he wanted to do and Sean being a coach himself and brilliant fucking just a whole fucking standard deviation above my fucking IQ I think um, 
you know, they were butting heads and they had both very, very specific ideas of what they wanted to do. And they ultimately had to part ways because of that, right? Um, but I'm that type of coach that really does value uh, my client's input uh, because most of my clients are not mega elite, right? Um, and even if they are, I still value their opinion. Like I'm about to talk to Moody after this um, and I... I value his input, right? Sometimes I'll fight him on things that I'm like, hey, I really believe we should do this because of this reason. Um, but, you know, if he has input for me, I'm, you know, I'm going to listen to him. Yeah. You know, I'm going to listen to him. He's an elite athlete. He knows his body. Um, I'm actually talking to two of my elite guys, my elite USAPL lifter, uh, Evan Bushy Lifts. Um, you know, he's pretty easy to coach um, in a lot of ways. Um, and he doesn't, he, he usually kind of goes with the flow. Uh, but you know, if he has input for me, if he thinks certain things would work better, you know, I'll pay te- I'll pay attention to him. Um, right. You know, I won't I won't let clients. I think there's a line. You don't want to let clients walk all over you and change the program every fucking week. Yeah. Um, because that's you know, and and as and as a coach, you need to maintain the authority, right? If you start right. letting a client really determine the program, I think that's you know a, a role reversal, and I think that's inappropriate, right? I yeah. should be, you know, you're paying me. Right. right. Otherwise, then let's 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 you know if you want to run your own shit, man. I have no fucking problem doing that. Yeah. You know, but don't pay pay me to run your own shit, and then it's just, it just creates a strange dynamic. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. And you and you want to and you want to avoid that, right? And you want to be you know, and if a client grows you, then you know so be it, and educate yourself a little faster, <laughs> or if they feel like I've <laughs> they've outgrown you, you know. Or if they disagree with you so much, then it's like, okay, difference in philosophies. Like, I'm sure there's another coach that has a philosophy that aligns with you. Um, but I don't know, kind of lost the plot there. But that's that's my general ramblings yeah. and thoughts on that. Um, uh, yeah, I think I, 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 I value my I value my clients' feedback, and I yeah. think it's important too. No, for you know, sure. if someone wa- if someone wants to do a different back accessory uh, that I'm doing, then nine out of times, t- nine out of ten times, I'll say, yeah, fuck it. You know, I yeah. may say, let's wait until next block. Let's run the let's run the course, but Right. Yeah. And I appreciate that about you. And I think that's, you know, another reason why, like when, you know, I could, at the end of the day, I'm a coach, like I could coach myself, right. I could make my own programming, but like, it's nice to just have someone to that's in it with you. Right. Like I can bounce ideas off of you. Right. Like we can, we're kind of in this together. Like, you know, I feel like this is the most laid back podcast I've had. Like, I feel like I, I know you already and stuff. So it's, you know, it's cool. It's like, it's nice to have someone in the game and kind of like, you know, being a part of the process. So um, I appreciate Same. that. And I hope my clients feel like that when they, when they work with me. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. You know, I definitely like to have a personal relationship with clients that feel like they can talk to me and you know, yeah. things like that. So. Yeah. Cool, man. So what, one question I ask every guest on the podcast um, is like, what is one thing that you would like to challenge the listeners to take action on right away after listening to this? Cause on the, on the elevate everyday podcasts, you know, we're all about like taking action. It's not just about like listening to the podcast mindlessly. It's about like taking action, putting this into practice into your life, like right away. So, so yeah, what's one thing you'd like to challenge the listeners to, to take action on? Um, I will say, you know, if we're, we're talking a lot about coaching in the context of coaching, um, having the right coach for you, I would say, um, elevate your standards and interview your coaches more. Um, this has been happening more recently, which is good. But um, elevate the standard of your coach, right? If someone has been working out for a year, you can look them up at Open Powerlifting, see what their lifts are. Uh, that's not everything, right? I don't, I don't think I'm a good coach because of my strength, but like, I think there's certain standards that you have, right? Like, if I was coming to you and talking all about like, yeah, let's build your bench press, man. And I've only benched 225 at fucking 185 fucking pounds. Mm-hmm. Like, I really think I'd just be talking out of my ass. Yeah, you know these sorts of things right so have some fucking standards right like (laughs) i always tell people like 400 less than 400 dots man i really don't want to hear what you have to say you know with very rare exceptions right like what the fuck are you talking about man you can't fucking lift you know and and dots by the way for for our listeners don't know it's like a lift coefficient so basically it allows me to compare to cade to compare to my mom if she power lifted to compare to you know any any you know a 308 lifter uh, to compare to a newbie, to compare to a woman. So you can kind of see, okay, what is their strength? It's like your strength statistics, strength score oh. that spans across everything. So it's like less than 400, like why? They're a fucking newbie, 
right? They're, they're, they're claiming to be a strength expert and they can't even hit 400 dots. Like, what are you talking about? I believe anybody that's serious about strength training can hit 400 dots. And if they haven't, why? Why haven't you hit 400 dots? <laughs> Please, fucking tell me why. Because your uh, your your programming's so amazing. Because you can't stay consistent in the gym. Why can't you stay consistent in the gym? Right? You're gonna tell me to stay consistent in the gym. You can't fucking do it. Yeah. You know, you 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 don't you you don't have the right coach, right? So you're telling me you want me to hire you, and you haven't hired the right coach to get you to this 400 fucking dots, right? <laughs> so how are you gonna teach me how to do that? You know, I think it's so fucking insane. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? You know. A fat nutritionist. I'm not going to see a fucking obese dietitian. I, I'm not. I'm <laughs> fucking not doing – seriously. You know what I mean? Like you're going to tell me how to eat right and you're fucking 40 pounds overweight, right? For Get sure. the fuck out of here. Seriously. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I don't want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Um, you know, relationship counseling from a guy who's been divorced seven times. Right. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> no fucking thanks. I'm not taking your advice. Respectfully, I'm not taking your fucking relationship advice. Yeah. You know, you might be able to give me advice on other things. You know, compartmentalize, right? Um, but anyway, be discerning about who you work with, right? So 400 dots, that's my fucking standard, right? You may disagree, fucking hit me up on Instagram and argue with me. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. that, that, that's my baseline because there are, um, you, you might say, well, uh, I found this coach that's under 400 dots. So it's like, okay, there's so many coaches nowadays. You can find someone that has a college degree. Not that I think that matters everything in the world. We can talk about that. But you can find someone with a degree with 400 dots that has coached 100 plus lifters that goes to their clients' meets and takes care of them, right? Yeah. You know, you absolutely can. Like, you know, yeah. me, I have like 10 personal training certs, trained thousands of personal training hours. I have been, I've coached like 75 fucking meets. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like I have the, I have the experience and you can find someone like that. You know, that has that expertise for yeah. you to hire someone that's been, you know, power thing for less than three years, coaching for less than one. I like you're wasting your fucking money. You're wasting right. your fucking money and your time because there's so yeah. many options out there that are going to be better. Take yeah. an extra 30 fucking minutes and search on Instagram and find someone that's better. Yeah. That's coached at least, I would say, 10 meets. And, you know, the, the newbie coaches are going to be so mad that I'm saying this. But like, hey, listen, you go earn your own way. Train your family and friends. Go help out at meets. You'll eventually get that experience. But if I'm telling a client that wants the best results, why are you going to go with a newbie? Why are you going to pay real money for someone that is so fucking new? Listen, I know beginner mechanics need experience. Listen, I feel for you. But do an oppression. I don't want you working on my car. If you're in for year one of mechanic school, I don't want you to work on my fucking car, man. I care about my vehicle, you know? And your body, guess what? You you don't. You, I could buy another Dodge Challenger eventually, right? <laughs> I don't want to. I like mine, but you can't get another body. Don't trust your body to a fucking newbie. Please, do not yeah. waste your fucking money. I think you're so insane for doing it. I think it's crazy. I just had a coaching call the other day with somebody, and I I literally don't care that they signed up because I signed up two more people after that. Oh my god, I'm so excited about these new clients. But I saw his coach, and he's weaker. He's newer, um, and I'm like, bro, what? And I guarantee you charge him a hundred bucks versus my four hundred, yeah. which is my like, okay, cool. You put you chose the cheaper option, whatever. More power to you. I don't care. But like, as an objective decision, let's say money's no object. I mean, I get people make budgetary decisions, which is again, why why I don't care? Why I'm not butthurt? But thinking from this client's perspective, I just feel bad. You know, yeah. you might get great results, but it's like. Let's be honest, there's also more experienced people that are charging less, you know, as experienced or more experienced than me that are charging less. So you could find another budgetary option, you know? Yeah. Again, I don't want people to make purely budgetary decisions with me, but let's say your budget is 150 bucks a month or 200 bucks a month. That's all you can afford, right? Okay, cool. You can't afford me. That's fine. I, I'm not hurt about it. I'm a big boy, right? But dude, here's the reality. You can find... Very experienced, very good coaches for 150 to 200 bucks. I know I'm spilling a secret, and I'm telling you guys there's competition <laughs> that might be better than me for cheaper. Crazy, right? But again, I don't want to chew work with me because of my budget. But if you really search, you can find it. Just be patient. Yeah. Just be patient. You know, you don't have to make a decision today. And I respect this guy for getting on calls with me and the other coach because apparently we're the only two that got back to him, which is also hilarious. It's like, what do you don't want business? Yeah. But. I think he'd be smarter to take another week and find someone better, you know? So just be fucking discerning. Be discerning, you know? Look, 
ask them. Ask them straight up. Hey, number one, I have a post on this, actually. Um, we should collab on a post like this in the future, but here's some questions to ask. Number one, what's your educational background? Right? It doesn't have to be a college degree. I'm not college educated, but I did like 10 certs. And I, read a, I read a shit ton. You know, I stay, you know, I stay updated with, I've done, you know, 50 grand in fucking courses and mentorships. And I pay, I've paid some of the best coaches in the industry to teach me, you know, but what education have you had, you know, and let them tell you, you know, if you require a college degree, fuck it. It's up to you. You know, you set your own standards, you know, it'd it'd make me feel bad, but whatever, (laughs) you know, set your own standards, right? You can, it's your life and it's, and it's your fitness, right? You know, ask them what kind of certifications, what kind of mentorships, what kind of courses, who's coached you? If they say nobody, what the fuck? They don't believe in coaching and, they, and they're selling coaching? You yeah. don't drink your own Kool-Aid, man? What the right. fuck? You tell yeah. me to drink this Kool-Aid and you don't drink it? Yeah. What's wrong with it? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Can you not afford coaching? What's going on with you? <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. Yeah, that's that probably the most fired up answer I've gotten. <laughs> that question i'm passionate about it man it's it's like yeah. holy shit man i think you're better off you know if, if you got a coach in front of you that's been training less than a year has five fucking clients or less and you know no degree no certifications never trained anyone person yeah. what the fuck yeah. you're smoking crack bro seriously just go go get a free program and learn off youtube you'll be better off i swear to you yeah so guys don't get a planet fitness trainer you know please <laughs> please it's your Dude, body it's so important yeah don't be a guinea pig yeah 100 percent. well cool man well um what what's next for you now i know you got hit by a, a damn car recently <laughs> as well so how, how's your comeback coming along and like what what's in the works for you recently the comeback is good um i you know parted ways with my old coach um it was a huge scandal he was just like not getting back to people and only taking care of his elite clients joe game day uh joe stanick i'll, I'll name drop i don't give a fuck um and uh i was just pretty disappointed um because i know he has the potential to be a good coach he just wasn't doing it for me okay. um and that kind of fucked up my flow a little bit not gonna lie and getting hit by a car at the same time so it was like Really difficult to find my stride, but I've been self-programming, and I've really found something that works with my deadlifts. I've been, you know, playing around with clusters again. I've been using them for, like, fucking seven years, but um, got out of the practice of using them. It's just a big pain in the ass to program. It's more work, and I had so many fucking clients at the time. Just overworking myself. <laughs> That's a story for another day, but um, I've been working around with them more and having a lot of success at deadlifts, um, and I really retooled it, and, and my deadlift finally came back to life so i'm feeling really good with that and competing in dallas on may 25th something like that um so i thought we were doing the same meet for some reason but we're not (laughs) which is good which i'm which i'm actually happy about um so that's going to be like kind of a tune-up meet um and then i'm gonna set the trajectory for the next year and a half i want to get to nationals um the standards have increased by like 200 fucking pounds so now Hmm. i'll need to deadlift 700 squat 600 and bench 400 um which is you guys know my numbers from the beginning I'm going to have to work for it, but I'm yeah. willing to step up to the challenge. I think I have above average genetics. I'm very resourceful. I'm fucking motivated. Like I said, three traits that you need. So yeah. I think I'll be able to do it. God damn it. Um, and I think just the pursuit of it, just the mission will fire me up and be a worthy cause. I like to be challenged. Um, I like to step up to challenging goals that I'm well fit, well fit for, as you all should listen to this podcast. And I know you are. We believe in the same thing here. Um, and I think it'll inspire my clients. I think it's a worthy goal. Um, and that's, you know, that's the strategy, you know, whether I'm going to do it myself, whether I'm going to get a coach to do it. Um, I'm just kind of burned from constantly switching coaches and figuring that shit out. So gotcha. well, I'm excited to see, see the comeback, man, and the comeback and then the, the exceeding where you were at and everything. So it'd be badass. But so guys follow Andres on Instagram at disruptive strength. Um, and then where, where else do you want to send the people? I know you said you're, you're starting a podcast too. IG is but... everything. IG is everything. We'll do a podcast. We'll definitely invite you on and, uh, cool. it'll be an absolute blast. Awesome. Sweet brother. Well, I appreciate you coming on here, man. And, um, to the listeners, you know, take what Andres said, you know, vet your, vet your coaches, interview them, ask them smart questions, you know, find someone with experience, find someone that's helped you do or help other people do and done themselves what you want to do clients like you say hey do you have three clients like me that have you have gotten to my goals ask that straight up yeah it's a challenging question question. you might even see them recoil a little bit yeah that's a good question yeah ask them that vet them though like this is like andre said this is your body guys like you know take it seriously 
but cool. Well, I appreciate you guys put that into practice right away. Like I said, the Elevate Everyday Podcast is about putting this into into practice, putting it into action in your life. So appreciate you. Appreciate you, Andres. And, you know, guys, see you guys in the next episode. In the meantime, elevate every damn day. Peace out. Thanks so much. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.